open your ears, and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm Nurse Ashley. And Nurse Ashley is now on the podcast tonight because she hasn't done that before. And I'm bringing her in. And I didn't have much of a game plan, but now we have a game plan. So, a week ago yesterday in Orlando, a piece of shit walked into a gay club, slash Latino club, I guess, and opened fire on a crowd of unsuspecting people, killing 49, injuring 53 more, and then ultimately running down the street, getting into a shootout with the SWAT team, and going out in a hail of gunfire like Queen Latif at the end of Set It Off. Gotcha, bitch! Yes. So you've heard about it? I did. I heard about it. Okay. The reason I'm having Ashley on is because I'm anti-gun, and she's pro-gun. And I own guns. And because we always kind of, like I say, do the opposite sides of the same coin, it's a good point-counterpoint. Correct. How many gay people would you say you know? Hi. Even just lightly. Somewhere between 10 and 15. Okay, I know three. All lesbians. Most of them that I know are lesbians also. Huh. I, have you ever been to, like, Pride? I have not. I would actually like to go, but I have not been yet. It looks like a good time, and no matter if you approve of the current nature of gay culture in America or you're one of those angry, pissed off, John Lithgow in footloose style homophobes. Uh, Gay culture in America is progressing and a lot of gay people, and by a lot I mean pretty much all of them, are very nice people. Yes. They're very accepting. Mm -hmm. They're yearning for acceptance and they just want to partake in all of the same rights as everybody else. Exactly. You, so you don't have any problem with any of that? No, not at all. And I've on multiple occasions voiced my support for the gay marriage amendment that went through our state, and even more so when the Supreme Court made the ultimately brilliant decision to legalize gay marriage, or same-sex marriage. Yes. So you've got 49 people dead in a nightclub, families shattered, and the whole point of where I'm going with this is the guy that shot them got the guns, Easily. Almost way too easily. He had been investigated by the FBI twice. I thought it was three times. Is it three? I heard three. Anything more than once, you're kind of like, what the fuck? Yeah. Go ahead, give the nut job some guns. Right. Yeah. So what Obama has proposed as just kind of one of his... I don't even know what to... It's like a last-ditch effort to try to make any progress on this issue before he's out of office. And... It's the whole no-fly, no-buy. Elaborate on that for me. If you're ever on a no-fly list, for five years after you're on the no-fly list, you cannot buy a gun, is the proposed law. Mm, I'm not really sure how that would necessarily help. They're trying to target people that they've investigated or suspect as possible Muslim extremists or people with violent histories violent tendencies, and proven mental illness that would pose them as a threat to the general public. So what keeps them from buying from some dude down the street who doesn't give a shit? Nothing at all. Exactly. It's kind of more or less like a security blanket. And I was all the way on board with it. And then I read what Trevor Noah of The Daily Show said a few days ago, is that, well, this list, this suspected terror list, throwing up the air quotes, Mm Mm-hmm isn't like a physical list that anybody can go check. The government controls it. They set the standards for how you get on it and how you get off it, if you get off it. And it's just kind of like willy-nilly, Wild West style. They have all the information. There's little to no transparency. I think it's actually a similar list that uh, banks and credit unions use also when you first open an account. Mm -hmm. They check your name in a thing called OFAC. Um, which is basically a list of terrorist names. Oh. And if it comes up as a match, you're not supposed to open an account for somebody. So I think there's more than one set of agencies that use a similar list. Sounds like a handy list. 
It is. I never had anything come up positive when I worked for the credit union. That's good. Uh, I never had anything come up positive when I've taken an AIDS test. Me either. High five. Yes. It's good to have lists. Lists are helpful, but the list should be available. It shouldn't be secret and hidden away, like the terror watch list or the no fly list or Schindler's list. Right. Because you want to know which Jews are getting saved. <sighs> There's only so many trolley cars on the train. you got to make sure that only the people that you have picked are getting in that motherfucker. Right. Exactly. And being whisked away to freedom. So what do you propose as a solution or a band-aid for the shitty situations that continue to happen in our country where people go and shoot up schools and clubs and movie theaters and malls and you name it? Well, see, here's where it's a sticky wicket and everybody's always like, these crazy asses are given responsible, well-trained gun owners a bad name. Here's the thing about it. You're responsible. Correct. You seem mentally healthy. Generally, yes. Your life falls apart tomorrow. You flip the fuck out. What's to stop you from becoming one of these people? Conscience. Like morals. Like I said, your life <laughs> falls apart. You're in a state of complete mental disarray. You could flip. Absolutely, I could. And then the responsible gun owner becomes Joe Q. Nutcase mm -hmm. shooting up a McDonald's, shooting up Fort Hood, shooting up a movie theater, shooting up his own school, shooting up a nightclub full of people. Right. So that's why all this focus on mental health, to me, is like a smoke screen. And they don't even really, like, do, do they get that they're essentially setting up standards that are unattainable? Because maybe somebody's deemed mentally ill and then it comes out six months later that it was just the doctor that was screening them. They're not mentally ill. They had an episode because they were off their meds and when they're on their meds, they're fine. Well, do you say, well, just in case you run out of Xanax, no guns for you. I think mental illness is definitely an issue that is looked down upon. In our society, coming from a nursing standpoint, I see a lot of people that have mental illness. And once you have that label, you kind of keep that label. Yeah, it's almost impossible to shake. However, everybody has a first time. So I do understand um, what you're saying about how I could lose everything and go crazy tomorrow. Yeah, that could definitely happen. But I also know that a lot of the people that have committed these crimes and they've done these, sh you know, shooting up of schools, et cetera, have a long history of mental illness that has already been noted over and over. What about uh, Dylan Klebold and the other cum stain from Columbine? I, they weren't necessarily mentally ill. They were social outcasts and they had a victim's mentality and they wanted to lash back out. That or maybe they were on the spectrum. A lot of those, um, a lot of the people that are on the autism spectrum with the um, the loner type mentalities and those types of things aren't necessarily mentally ill, but they do have a disease that makes them um, more able to explode suddenly. So kind of like Adam Lanza in Newtown, Connecticut, the Sandy Hook shooter kid? Right. He wasn't mentally ill per se, but he was very... What did he have, Asperger's? Um, generally speaking, those are the ones that would be able to carry out those type of scenarios where they have the planning aspects and they're able to... Um, they're high functioning. So where we've gotten now is we've established that maybe it's not just the mentally ill. Maybe it's people with a learning disability or developmental or cognitive disorder. Which, obviously, you're not going to give Corky from Life Goes On a fucking M16. Probably not. As hilarious as that sounds in my head, it's probably not going to end well. Right. So then, once again, number one fan, Tim. Yes. Responsible gun owner. Sure. Very pro-gun. Likes to invoke elements of the castle doctrine when discussing possible scenarios that right. prompted him to buy the gun. Exactly. But as we've all found out, the castle doctrine isn't called that here per se and it doesn't necessarily protect you right and unfortunately in many states it doesn't now don't get me wrong if somebody comes into my house and is threatening my child or myself i'm probably going to take matters into my own hands no you have to run away and then cry for help and beg them to leave and then lock right, yourself and, in the bathroom and call 911 and wait the seven minutes for them to get to my house right that's not going to happen or if you're jody foster you go in the panic room 
Right, but I don't have a panic room. And then it becomes like a weird, technologically savvy, single mom version of Home Alone. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What a weird fucking um, connection. You know, there. Are, I understand the Castle Doctrine idea. Unfortunately, yeah, well, there is that, you know, there's been a couple of cases where that has happened and people have claimed it was self-defense. I was, you know, um, looking over my homestead and they still went to jail. Because they now murdered somebody. So the takeaway from that statement is, don't kill them, just wing them. Right. Wound them. Go for the elbows, go for the kneecaps. They, I know like when you're shooting training, they're like... Center mass. Center mass. Aim small, miss... What was it? Aim small, miss big? Or is it aim small, miss small? What are you? A dumbass? Regardless, if you're aiming at... You don't, center mass, you're more apt to hit something. You don't go for like, oh, I'm going to shoot him in the foot. I'm going right. to shoot the gun out of his hand. Yeah, exactly. You know how fucking Pecos Bill dead eye you have to be to shoot a gun out of somebody's hand? Yeah, this isn't the Wild West. That's ridiculous. Because how do you even train for that? You buy a couple of mannequins and put like <laughs> plastic guns duct taped into their hand and try shooting them out in the back 40 of your grandma's backyard? Maybe. I guess that's an option. That's just off the top of my head. I'm spitballing. Although I think mannequins are kind of expensive and ammo's already expensive enough. So, right. you know, you have that. Okay. So you just get a bunch of diseased people that want to die anyway and say, hold this. <laughs> uh, Canada. Wasn't that who just passed a physician assisted suicide bill? Did they really? I thought I heard God it was damn, someplace. Good for Canada's yeah. awesome. They're yeah. fucking awesome. Shout out to uh, Scott Doucette of the Kim and Scott. I forget what it's called, podcast. Uh, the guy is one of the founders of the Podcast Discovery Center on Facebook, and he's been a lot of help for me whenever I've had questions, and he's just a really fucking cool guy that I can fling jokes at like we're old buds, and he's just cool as shit to everybody. Lives in Canada. See? Cool things come from Canada. But Canada's trying to be the first North American country to pass an absolutely decriminalized marijuana law. Well, I can't say I'm against that. Right. But uh, circle, go Canada. Go Canada. Circling back to guns, I said it that way. Like I'm thinking of uh, Wayne's World when the psycho hose beast chick gives him a gift. He's like, "It's a, uh, it's a gun rack." Yeah, it's a gun rack. Uh, what would I do with a gun rack? I don't even own a gun. Because mm-hmm. I don't even own a gun. I refuse to get one because I don't want to give the possibility for one of my kids to find it or one of their friends to find it or somebody to use it against me. Right. Ideally, you're like, like you said, I would take matters into my own hands. Right. But where do most people keep their guns? I keep my gun in a safe. In a safe. So let's say somebody charges into the bedroom. You're going to be like, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Equalizer. I got to turn the thing in the left. Fuck. Is it 13, 5? When's your birthday? Okay, hold on open check the safety racket okay let's go it's not like zach morris in saved by the bell where he's like time out right and, and everything freezes. just stops i can't believe he never touched kelly kapowski's tits when he did that right because i would be because that totally would be wrong tits. that would be wrong maybe no it Kinda. would be wrong <laughs> not by bill cosby standards no not by bill Cosby. way standards. easier than a mickey just going oh time out <laughs> That was the that was disturbing. Wiggling the clip yeah, with yeah. The thing. I got that. So, if we can't just pin it on a false standard of mental illness, and we now have to compound it by worrying about people with developmental disabilities, and then you've got the facet of society that's so pro gun that the second you mention anything about the Second Amendment, they stand up like they're ready to fucking pounce, like, "Don't you dare take my fucking gun!" Which, by the way, why is it every time they talk about the traditional gun owner, they sound like Yosemite Sam? <laughs> uh, the southern states are very pro-gun They are, Texas, Jesus Christ yeah. Donald Trump wants to build a wall on the Mexican border Can we build a fucking wall around Texas too? I think that'd be a perfect idea We'll just go across the southwestern border And then over Texas And then back, everybody else is safe Hey, build it Everything's bigger in Texas And they want to be their own country anyway Maybe they'll build a bigger wall And they don't want abortion or gays So I mean, fuck it. just be your own country, Texas, come on be your own backwater, narrow-minded, 60 years in the past type of country. It works. So who's left to regulate then? Because you've singled out the biggest groups. Normal people, crazy people, terrorists, and people that are mentally retarded. So what the hell? So 
here's what this is like. It's like uh, playing Simon with a blindfold on. Is that the little thing that you like have to hit the right area? You have and to stuff? hit the right pattern when it lights up and mimic it. Okay. But you can't see the pattern. Are yeah. you smart enough to know the tones? Figuring out the answer to this issue is that fucking complicated. I agree. So, I mean, you can't just pull an Australian and take all the guns away. I don't think you'd ever be able to take all the guns away. Right, because you'd have the ammo stores of the nutcase survivalists up in the mountains. You'd have everybody yeah. in the hood on the south side of Chicago who's uh, shooting everybody up and earned the reputation of the nickname Chirac. The bad guys aren't going to give up their guns, so we can't give up our guns. I understand the mentality of, I want what the bad guys have so that the bad guys can't hurt me, but you have so many places where your gun is quote-unquote not allowed. Places mm-hmm. that other people bring their guns to. Um, yeah, that sign out in front of Target. If you're strapped in, in the back of your jeans, do you really think you're going to give a shit? Right, exactly. You're going to get up to the door and go, oh, excuse me a moment, I have to go put my gun back in the car. That's yeah. probably not going to happen. That security thing you walk through that goes off is looking for uh, metallic security tags or magnetic security tags. Yeah. It doesn't detect weapons. Exactly. So it's a fucking useless precedent to have that sign because nobody's going to... You're, you're banking all your faith on people going, it's the right thing to do. It's the rules. I'm going to go put it back in my fucking trunk and kill me a rabbit. <laughs> or something. Man, I don't like colored people. Right. Because I, I figure like all old grumpy white men don't like colored people. And who still calls them colored people? You, apparently. Just in that voice. Nothing uh, wrong with being colored. Which, by the way, colored is such a safer word than anything else. That's a person of color is what they, I think, the politically correct term is right at this given moment right now right now it will probably change tomorrow but it it, will right now it's a person of color here's the answer there is no answer exactly so what you have to do is come up with a solution with a large caveat so what i'm proposing we should do uh j man in 2020 Back on the presidential campaign trail. All right. Because after Hillary or Donald or whoever the third someone's going to have to come through. through, and it won't look nearly as bad. Well, I'm so already going to be picking you might up as the well. pieces, <laughs> right? So yeah, after uh, Donald Trump creates uh, World War Three or sets it off somehow, or Hillary ends up getting assassinated because I mean, most of the world she's of, Hillary. Of all the countries in the world that should not have a female president, I feel like it's us. Not because a woman can't do the job, but because, as Vladimir Putin said two days ago, America's the only superpower. If the top of the food chain suddenly is a female, everybody else is like, wait a minute, what the fuck? This is a new standard for them. They're in uncharted territory. They are ripe for the picking. I think regardless of who's going to be the next president, because we both know it's going to be one or the other. Whoever wins, we all lose. Exactly. That is exactly it. And I'm... I'm not saying this because I think Obama should be shot, but I'm surprised there have been no assassination attempts on that man. Honestly, I am too. Because everybody was so angry about a black man in office or somebody that was possibly born in another country in office or somebody that's not very skilled in politics and doesn't have a lengthy acumen of different seats he's held at multiple levels of administration in the office of president. There were so many goddamn reasons why people were pissed off about Obama. But J-Man proposes this. Second Amendment stays as is. But, here's the caveat. An amendment banning assault rifles. What are you considering an assault rifle? AR-15s and uh, AK-47s. Anything that's semi-automatic or fully automatic. Right now we have a fully automatic ban, I believe. We do. But we get the semis too. Why? Because what's the weapon of choice these people keep using? Unfortunately, the AR-15. And handguns. They all, almost every single one of them has a handgun, too. They do. You're never going to get rid of the handgun thing, but that's a much easier pill to swallow than somebody getting a weapon that can fire a round as fast as they can pull the trigger and has the option of three-round bursts. Right. Because you can't use it to hunt, can you? I honestly don't know. I don't hunt. I shoot guns mainly for target practice i can't imagine there's too many places in this country where you can uh take an ar-15 out into the wild and just start popping off deer in three round bursts it's overkill i honestly have no idea 
So, I mean, if if they said that, because you don't own one, but I, I, I know do not. people that My do. dad owns one. Would he be willing to give it up for the greater good? You not think? a chance. Why not? Because he's one of them very pro-gun, I want to kick your ass the second you talk about the Second Amendment type of people. Wow, so he's going to listen to this and he's going to be like, that's my girl oh, talking about me. <laughs> my dad's not going to listen to this. Okay. <laughs> I just... I feel like that's the answer because all the other proposed measures are almost too drastic. Because as they propose with the no fly, no buy, in principle, it's an easy connection, but it's it's like a crutch because you don't know who controls it. The NSA could put anybody on that list for any stupid fucking reason. And unless there's absolute transparency, which our government's not exactly known for. Right. Right. We're still trying to figure out Area 51. Which, ironically, Hillary's like, I'd declassify the shit out of all of that. We'd find out. <laughs> okay. In an email. In an email to everybody? <laughs> now, she better state of the union, that shit. <laughs> okay, let me just give you the Cliff Notes version. Uh, no aliens. Are you fucking kidding me? The documents are online. You can read them here. Uh, you know? That was pretty simple. It seems it'd either be aliens or no aliens. Because either way, you're going to go, oh, what the fuck? 50% of the people are going to have that reaction. And the other 50 aren't going to believe it. Well, 25% of the remaining 50 won't believe it. The other 25% will go, okay, yeah, we got some answers. Let's get on with important shit like, you know, curing diseases and childhood hunger and maybe trying to stop gun violence. That stuff. Back to a ban on assault weapons or assault rifles, AR-15s and such. I personally, as a gun owner, do not care. I do not see a need for myself to have an AR-15 or an M16 or... An M4. A- anything. They're like military that. grade. Exactly. And and honestly, there's never going to be an instance in my life where I go, God, I really want one of them. I want to shoot one because it's fun. I've shot one because it's fun. It's not. However, no, I really enjoy Did shooting you? guns, though. It doesn't matter what kind. You put it in my hands, I'll shoot it. Oh, good for you. I was just worried that it was going to jam, and no matter how much I tapped and racked, the some bitch wasn't going to unjam, and I was going to get yelled at by my firearm instructor. But they made us practice taking them apart. Right. Like halfway and putting them back together. I got pretty fucking skilled. I'm like a machine if you give me simple hand-eye coordination drills with, like, machine parts. It's just how my brain works. I can't play the piano. I can't figure out how to play guitar. I come up with a thousand jokes a minute, and I can disassemble an assault rifle pretty decently. Not all the way to pulling out the fucking right. spring in the whole nine, but as much as they'd let us when we were practicing when I was a cop. And the guy's like, why is the gun back together? I said, take it apart. I'm like, I already took it apart and put it back together twice. He's like, no, you didn't. The other dude who was in FTO with me, he's like, no, he did it. And like, he did it in under 30 seconds. He's like, no shit. Show Some people me. have a mind for those kinds of things. But now people would say, well, J-Man, you can't fucking say shit because you're anti-gun. Of course you're going to want to take away some guns. But I said keep your handguns. Sure. It's give and take. I give you the opportunity to maintain all of your handgun rights now. And I take away the assault rifles and I'll, I'll throw another give in. We allow weapons on military bases. I think there should be weapons on military bases. Are they that afraid that the people we are training to defend our borders in in other countries, defend our freedom, they're that afraid to give the trained people weapons out of fear that they might get drunk or high or have a moment of weird bipolarism and go all shoot happy? Yeah, scary, right? Because Fort Hood. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, what I found out that they had no weapons on that base, that there was a weapon ban on the base, I was floored. I'm like, you have got to be shitting me. I don't understand it. But I just, I think we take that away. If if people can try that, try it for the four years of my first term. Right. I refuse Your to be one? a single term president. God damn okay. it. And I hope I don't age 20 years and eight like everybody else does. <laughs> you probably will. Like by the time it's over, I stop looking like me. I start looking like my dad. I look a lot like my dad. I just, you know, be an older version of me. I've never met your dad. Right. Well, most people haven't. But Neil has, and he says he's passive aggressive. And I've, <laughs> I, talked, I've, about heard his, that. I've talked about his temper. Uh, my dad, I guess this is, this is good that I brought him up. My dad only owned one gun growing up. It was a hunting rifle that he got from his brother that he never kept loaded. He had no ammunition in the house, and he got rid of it because he never used it. The entirety of my life, 
He only held on to it because he had it. Just like the motorcycle he used to have years ago, he got rid of it and sold it to his brother. He sold his Harley to my Uncle Scott. Got rid of the gun. I don't even know what the fuck he did with it. There were no guns in my home. Maybe that's why I'm, I don't care to own a gun. But not having them available and having been trained with them now in cop school and on the job. Like, I fired weapons. It doesn't really give me my jollies unless there's nobody else on the line. I don't have to worry about hot uh, casings coming at my face from somebody right. adjacent. Because that sucks. Or going right down the front of your shirt and getting stuck in your cleavage. Let me tell you how fun that, that is. Had to suck. I had one go up and over the top of my glasses. And I put my head down. And it was just like... Rolling back and forth across the nose part yeah. of it. It almost burned my face. No, thank you. So, like, I never grew up with parents that really drank. And my parents, as far as I know, have never, ever touched drugs. I've never touched drugs. I don't drink anymore, and I never have been drunk, and I rarely drank when I did. And uh, I don't have guns. So I I guess I'm emulating a lot of what I was shown growing up. Your dad liked guns. No, you like guns. actually, I did not grow up around guns at all. My dad didn't get into guns until about five or six years ago. Why? I, you know, he goes through spurts. He went through a spurt of really enjoying exotic animals, and we had a lot of really awkward pets growing up. Um, he went through a time where he really enjoyed doing different things with his hair. I mean, he'd have different colored polka dotted hair. A lot of people um, do that. Normally, it's like high school, though. No, this was adulthood, unfortunately. Um, so I didn't grow up with guns, and Dad got into them. You know, was very Ashley. You need to get your permit to carry, and I did not like guns. Um, then I started actually going to the range with him, and I enjoyed shooting guns, um, which I, you know, led me to get my permit to carry and buy guns and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, both my parents did drugs, never touched one. Both my parents drank. I don't really drink. You know, they don't now. So you're the opposite trend of me. Exactly. Essentially. Pretty much. But what about your mom? My mom hates guns. Okay. So the reason that I'm anti-gun for anybody just saying is, well, you grew up not having guns. You never learned to like them or respect them. That's not the case. I despise guns because of their sole purpose. Destruction. Mm -hmm. They're designed to stop a threat, to kill an animal, to kill an assailant for fighting war and taking away human life. To hit a target. Hitting a target is practicing at shooting at a person or an animal. No, I just kind of like to target shoot. So unless you've got a gun that's completely empty of ammunition, you're not normally hammering nails with it, you know? Not generally, no. That's an expensive tool. Yeah, you can't build with it. You can't create with it per se. So they only have that negative connotation. I've tried to wrap my mind around the idea that maybe because of the line of work I'm in being a correctional officer, that one day I'm going to meet some crazy asshole who's going to demand that he finds out where I live and he's going to come see me just for his own sick, sadistic satisfaction. That could happen. It could happen. And I could have a gun and I could totally shoot him. Mm -hmm. But then I'd be in a litigical clusterfuck with his family and possibly locked up for it. So that's why I have an old style billy baton in my sock drawer. And then I have a boot knife in my other drawer. And now they all know you got those in your sock drawer and in your other drawer. So they just got to keep you away from that with their gun. I got hammers in three different rooms. I got a hatchet somewhere I'm not going to say. I have a splitting mall somewhere else where you'd least expect it and a lot of knives. And you know how long it takes for you to get to a knife and them to draw their gun? Ah, That's That's probably already drawn. That's why I'm taking adult karate classes now. Congratulations. So I can work on my defense, self-defense, and disarming techniques, which I practiced a lot in school, too. Right. In skills, we practice a lot of disarming techniques. So I'd rather rely on uh, hand-to-hand combat because it's going to be in close quarters. Mm -hmm. Let's face it. If you're going to pull out a katana blade, as badass as that sounds, you probably don't have hallways that are six feet wide. No. And the hallways are only going to be like eight feet high. Right. So you pull it out, you're already... Stuck. Logistical disadvantage. So that's that's that. Now, I, I respect guns. I know you don't just wave them around like a fucking idiot. Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. And stupid people go out to shoot targets with their friends out in the woods, and then somebody gets drunk and waves it around, and accidents happen. Yeah. But I can't have any accidental discharges in my house without a gun. I can't have my kids shoot each other without a gun. I can't have a gun that I don't own use against me because I don't have a gun. So that's why I don't have guns. 
How this ties into gay culture. Hi. The incident was in a gay slash Latino club. I think it was more so Latino, mostly Latino because of the area. Right. Well, As opposed to it actually being labeled a Latino club. Right. Well, first it was gay club, gay club, gay club. And then the other day I read gay and Latino club. Well, that makes sense because there's so many Latinos on the shooters list of people he took down. Right. Exactly. And I think that's why they were making that note. I don't think it was necessarily like, hey, we're a Latino club. They're in the area where there are is a, a wide variety of Latinos just in the area. So this was a crime of prejudice against gays, Correct. it seems. It seems. And as more details about this Mateen, whatever the fuck his name is. It doesn't matter. So uh, fuckface here that perpetrated this crime was known to frequent this bar. That's what I hear. And because we don't know the true classification of the establishment, it sounds like uh, gay patrons were very aware of him. Yes. And now they're looking into whether or not he had a secret, air quotes, gay life. Exactly. Was he the stereotypical dad at the end of American Beauty that just is mad at himself because he can't accept himself because he's so petrified of being called different or persecuted himself so that he hates on what he hates about himself? Mm Mm-hmm. It happens. A lot of people do that. Yeah. How did you know that? I had read somewhere that the current wife had actually taken him there to, quote unquote, scope out the place prior to the attack happening. For the sake of planning? That was kind of not understood real well. See, that's the fucked up part is the media these days is on 24-7. You almost think there were 36 hours in a day. Exactly. With the amount of over-reporting we get in. And what's our society about now? you got to be the first one with the scoop. And people recklessly report details without actually getting anything substantial right away. And more to follow. We'll have more when we find out more. Right. And it, they can always, you know, come up with something bigger and better that'll make you forget about the wrong shit they told you in the first place. Initial reports have now been, un- have now been unfounded. And we learn this. And it's like... So the guy goes out and hail a gunfire. He makes the 911 call like before the shooting or during the shooting? During, from what I understand from a bathroom is what I read earlier. So that was the bathroom that he must have been in with all the people hiding in the stall. And he kept ordering them to come out and they wouldn't. And he kept trying to point the gun over the stall door. Maybe. I didn't hear that, but... There were eyewitness accounts three days ago on Yahoo from a story, I think, off of uh, the Associated Press, that that's what they reported. They huddled in the bathroom. They were scared shitless. A couple people had been shot. They were in there for a while, and he kept ordering them to come out, and they wouldn't. And he kept, instead of shooting through the door, he kept, like, trying to wave the gun over the top to threaten people. Hmm. But I don't think he put any rounds up. The point, it's neither here nor there, but he called the dispatch and pledged allegiance to ISIS. Now, I had heard that originally... And then one of the stories that I read today said that the parts of it that were released to the public from the 911 call did not have that in it. Now, whether or not that was a we're just not going to share everything type of thing or if it was incorrect in saying that, I don't know. That's the thing. You you, you never know what the fucking truth is with the media because they're all about having the hot, quick take before they're even confirming all of it. They're getting like, I don't know. Is there a percentage? Is it like three quarters or 80% or 90% sure before you go back? Well, fuck it. Because the odds of us being that wrong and getting sued for it are so minimalistic to the number of clicks, views, and exposure we're going to get. We're just going to go with the story. So it sounded like he pledged allegiance to ISIS. Uh, People that have met him in the past from all the different jobs he's been let go from have described him as hostile, antagonistic, a loner, a steroid abuser, somebody that looked like he was just out to start shit anytime he felt disrespected. This is a guy with some serious fucking personal issues. This is a guy whose ex-wife says that she was beaten by him, that he was angry all the time, that he was aggressive. Um, I mean, obviously somebody has to have some form of aggression to commit an act like this you know you don't just do that because fuck it's sunday right you know that's that's not that's not the way a normal person's mind would work it's the lord's day time to kill some gays right because you can't pray the gay away so let's shoot it away i mean come on 
you know, it's, what do you do in that instance? So, so here's the other fucked up part of this now is they put that, those details out right away. And then ISIS basically gave him an attaboy posthumously on their Twitter accounts and stuff. Right. But then Anonymous, the hacker group, got a hold of it. And they turned the uh, the website into like a gay praise site. Oh, I didn't hear there about that. There was a rainbow background border. There was, I, I don't know if it was Osama bin Laden's head on a gay man dancing in a club or something. But all of a sudden all these details came out that this guy might have been gay. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, angry at the gays because his religion says to basically punish the gays. Because they always say that in Islamic culture you should punish homosexuals. Yeah. And it is against all of their laws to be gay. Unless, odd caveat here, unless it's a male who owns a slave and then he rapes the slave as a show of power. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, that makes total sense. That's the only time you can be gay is Rape when you're raping another man. Gay. Yeah. Rape, raping another man just to show force over him as he's your slave. Couldn't you just say, wash my dishes? Yeah, but apparently it doesn't feel as good as busting a nut inside of an anus. Oh, huh. all right. Or getting all those secret homosexual tendencies out. You're like, this is for power. Allahu Akbar. I make you blow a spoke out. No lube. <laughs> he just... didn't even spit, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, just nobody's going to spit. <laughs> and now it's time. You feel. So it's funny because all of a sudden this guy could have possibly been gay. And ISIS already said good job. And they're kind of like in a weird position now where, so you're glorifying a man that killed gays who probably could have been gay himself and all signs are pointing to he had secret gay tendencies? Uh-oh. Right. There were several people who, from that club, it was reported by the press that several people had seen him on, like, gay dating apps um, in the area. Uh, popular gay dating apps, apparently. Um, Must have been Grinder. That's the only. Yeah, one, that's the only one I yeah, know of. That was one of them, and I honestly didn't know any of them. But that was one of them. Isn't that a hilarious name for a game? It's awesome. Game? It's awesome. Grinder. So versus it, Gobbler. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, they're pointing then again towards he's in this club quite a bit. He's on these gay dating apps. Was he gay? Dude, if you have to ask, you'll never know. So it's just kind of like, well, now we're they're trying to retrofit this scenario towards the anti-gun agenda, and it's like an onion with many layers now. Was he the closeted homosexual that was practicing self-hate? Was he just being a steadfast Muslim? We don't know. Right. Sounded mentally ill. Was he mentally ill? We don't know. And that's why it's so hard to be actionable on crap like this, because... You don't know who to scapegoat because you could either bring on a wave of glorification from religious zealots that are homophobic or you could get accused of Islamophobia, which is what Donald Trump accused Obama of is basically calling him a pussy. He wouldn't say Islamic extremism because he didn't want to offend the Muslims. Right. But, you know, Donald so, Trump. So just like all the gun owners that say, don't clump in all gun owners with these... Uh, mass shooting incident people you can't clump this guy in with the regular gays and the regular Muslims you can't clump extremist Islam with regular Islam which I have explained uh, oh by the way I'm only referring to my ex as the beast now the beast I like that it's inspired by a movie what we do in the shadows it's a vampire movie regardless so the beast's father was a practicing Muslim I don't know if her dad ever went to a mosque regularly, but they had a mass in his honor at a mosque in Fridley, and her brother from this mom, and then two other siblings that they have that are half-siblings, because they all have the same dad with different moms, had to go wash his body. Traditional Muslim burial. Sure. I have a respect for Islam because I've seen it, and all the Muslims I've ever met have been good people, have been kind people, have been generous people. The Beast's half-brother, who's like in his 40s, he has a lot of money, right? He doesn't throw it around and be like, I have money. Mm -mm. 
He told me the reason I'm so giving all the time with even extended family who I hardly know, such as yourself, where I offer to buy everybody dinner tonight. Islam is about good deeds. Mm -hmm. All through life, you, you action good deeds and you reap the benefits in the afterlife when you make it to heaven. It is a peaceful religion, primarily. Correct. But there are aspects of the Quran that can be misinterpreted. Then people say, no, it's a, it's a religion of violence. The concept of jihad is not as uh, substantial as you might believe as reported by the media. Right. The media. And there's plenty of people that say, you know, oh, he's this crazy Christian person who hates all gays and don't abort babies and yada, yada, yada. Whereas the entire religion isn't like that. Why are you talking about Ted Cruz? <laughs> Can't help myself. Uh, I see. If we were playing Guess Who Karaoke, I would have got it right away on the first. That sounds like Ted Cruz. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, how are we ever supposed to solve the gun debate if we're still fighting people that want to undo Roe versus Wade and undo the gay marriage amendment? I mean, what the fuck is with this country that we're all one step forward, two steps back mentality where it's a tug of war and nothing ever gets accomplished for a long period of time because once one administration is out the door and there's a new president and the control of the Senate or Congress goes to the opposing party, we have to undo all the fuck-ups from that guy that we don't like. And this is why I say America needs a king. It's a battle of wits with an idiot. That's it's, America. We just keep chasing our own fucking tail, and it's stupid. There should be, like, a rule that if you pass an amendment after, like, 25 years, if the majority of the politicians do not agree with overturning it, that's it. You get one chance to review after 25 years. You know, like, what are we going to do? Make black people slaves again? No. Exactly. Take away your right to vote because of your vagina? No. Probably not ban people from getting citizenship just because they're an anchor baby? Unfortunately not. Damn it. So, we ban the assault rifles. We don't always point the finger at extremist Islam because it's a fucking scapegoat. Yes. And I think the reason that crimes against gays and a lot of the world prejudice against gays still exists is a great deal to do with organized religion. The Great Uniter. Fucking stupid. But because we can't make up our minds as to say we're 50-50 on gay rights. What if there was a unified American front as the, quote Putin here, only superpower that we were pro-gay everything. And we just fucking stop with this religious bullshit. And then the rest of the world might start following suit in some of the less popular areas. Right? In theory, perhaps. Right. Possibly. It seems like a lot of countries try to emulate us. The rest of them just kind of get democracy jammed down their throat like a Cosby dick in a green room after some pills are swallowed by accident. Or by surprise. Pudding pops. You can't always scapegoat Islam in these. It's, it's like the rationalization du jour. Because ISIS is so fucking popular right now to report about with all the atrocities they commit... If we didn't have TV or the internet, would you know about ISIS? No, absolutely not. Maybe if there was some far out reporter that happened to come across them and escape and then came back and then we got a fireside chat via the radio during dinner time, you wouldn't know. So if we didn't know about all this fucking bullshit going on in the Middle East, I guess we probably wouldn't have so much Islamophobia. And... You know, if they didn't have the internet and TV anywhere, I know this is a crazy precedent that I'm saying, if we didn't have the TV or internet, but if we didn't have that, the rest of the world wouldn't know about all these mass shootings that go on here. They wouldn't think we're all a bunch of gun-toting freak shows. I have a feeling you wouldn't see as many mass shootings. Well, no, because you wouldn't be glorifying this shit and people are like, well, I could do that. Exactly. I can one-up that. Inspiring all these people. And, and as sick as this is going to sound... If somebody walked into the Moose Lake prison tomorrow, one of the guards walked in and snuck in a gun and killed 20 sex offenders, I don't care. You probably don't care. Nobody cares. Except sex offenders and bleeding heart liberals like you. They're people. They're not. We've covered this. Episode 15, The Excellence of Execution, 
which if you didn't get that reference was uh, a nod to Bret Hart, the wrestler, Bret the Hitman Hart. Yeah. It's weird. As uh, Dan Barrero of K-Fan says, it all depends on whose ox is being gored. Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. So if you're not a Muslim, you don't give a shit about Islamic extremism being totally shit upon in the media. And um, if you like guns, you're obviously going to freak the fuck out the second they talk about changes to gun laws. Well, not necessarily. I like to hear them out. I, I'm not that person, though, that goes, oh, my God, they're all going to take my guns. Like, you can't even fucking mention it to some people. Oh, that's my dad. Who's that country singer guy, Brantley? Gilbert. Is the stupid fucker that got a tattoo on his back, the whole size of his back, that's two pistols pointing down, and it says amendment, and there's a number two. And he's got the language of the Second Amendment tattoo. That never comes off, Brantley Gilbert. You (laughs) stupid motherfucker. You know what that thing is? That is a high-priced piece of shit on your back because you can only see it in a mirror. That's like buying a Van Gogh. And then hanging it in a room of your house you never go in. The formal living room. Not even no that. no one's allowed to go. You son of a bitch! Like it's on a wall hung and stashed behind boxes in the storage room of your basement. Because you're always wearing a shirt most of the time. You're not Randy from Trailer Park Boys. You're not the cheeseburger walrus walking around with no fucking shirt on. So, it, why would you do that? Back tattoos are dumb. Assault rifles are dumb. Islamophobia is dumb, but then again, in a larger sense, I think organized religion is really fucking dumb and an outdated concept and irresponsible. Amen. Thought I'd throw in some religion. J-Man 2020 says an absolute separation of church and state. Get your God out of my government. Because the biggest issues we have in this country that we cannot come to a fucking decision on because we're so divided are all because of religion. Pretty much. Abortion. Yep. Gay culture and gay marriage. Yep. How about uh, cloning? Yep. Or stem cell research? What else? What else? Polygamy. You want polygamy? Have polygamy. I just, um, I probably should have had more examples to solidify my point. Right. Throw me a bone here if you can think of one. I got nothing. Cocksucker! Okay, women voting, women having jobs. There's a lot of... Women doing anything. There's a lot of religions that think that women should be subservient. There's a lot of religions that would freak the fuck out if you went out tomorrow and had a kid with a black guy. Yep. Because, oh, that's that's interracial breeding. Fuck you, it's stupid. I don't know that that's necessarily against religion in general, but people that are small-minded... I, I don't know that it's an actual, like, religion issue. Well, see, the tie-in here is that, uh, think of religion as the rope in gym class that we were forced to climb. Yep. And each one of these issues is a different knot on the way up. Uh-huh. And tapping the flag or ringing the bell at the top is declaring that you're a full-blown, God-fearing nutcase like Ted Cruz. So on the way up, you're passing gay marriage, interracial relations, abortion. Well, abortion's probably at the top of that crazy train. I didn't say it was a tall rope. But each one of these (laughs) issues is like another notch you're passing on the way to the top. So in that relation, saying that uh, most people against interracial marriages and breeding tend to be a lot of like right-wing conservative Christians. Yeah. So a lot of time prejudice is masked in their religious beliefs. There, I just dug myself out of a hole. The the thing about this is where I wrap it up with like a Jerry Springer point at the end is there's no answer because we can't agree on anything long enough and there's such a large divide. Think of this whole gun issue as two sides that are the opposing bodies of water when Moses parts the Red Sea. Not religious reference. Yep. Thank you, Catholic school. Way to go. Well, that's it. And everybody else that seems to be thinking logically is walking down the middle. And staying dry. And staying dry. Unfortunately, not that many people were going across a parted Red Sea. But you see the point I'm trying to make. Right. Unfortunately, once those waters come together and try to meet mines, everybody in the middle drowns. Right. Doesn't matter. Because you're getting caught in the undertow of complete idiocy. I don't see what the big deal is with gay people that you feel the need to persecute them. 
I don't necessarily feel like you need to ruin somebody's life and business because they don't want to make a cake for your gay wedding. Go to another fucking store. Or just make the damn cake. Right. Like, you can't sit down with some Betty Crocker and a couple of very interestingly shaped tins and make a penis cake. You totally could. Or like a vagina cake. Boob cake. Two sets of legs scissoring cake. How would you get the death? Well, I don't fucking that's... know. It's kind of like a Pinterest project. I'm not, I'm not a baker. You see it, and then you try to mimic it, and then it just it looks like a fucking mess. So I think if we could just get off this whole gay thing and try to, instead of going one extreme or the other with the guns, you have to meet in the middle. And I know it, I'm making it sound way easier than it is. Right. You have to. And this no fly, no buy thing without full government transparency is a pipe dream that'll never get off the ground. And if he tries to push it through through executive order, I'm going to be pissed off. I think a lot of people would be. Not because he's doing it through executive order, because executive order now is popular because Congress doesn't do shit. They're gridlocked. Ever. So you force his hand. Every time you shake a fist, politicians at Obama, for just doing whatever the fuck you think he wants, it's your own fault for inaction. You are forcing his hand. He needs to get things done or else his entire presidency would have just been eight years of waiting on you guys to stop waving your dicks at each other across the aisle. Sensibly so, it seems. We just... You gotta kind of wheel it in. But scapegoating Islam cannot continue to be the answer. Because you don't do it to Judaism. You don't do it to people who are atheists. Well, no, because atheists are too busy trying to tell all the God-fearing people... Why that they're not no God, yeah. <laughs> they're fending off all the hatred from the conservative Christians and such that they don't have time to learn how to shoot a gun and go out and hate on people. They're too busy hating the universe that God created. <laughs> or just right. happened in the Big Bang, derp. So yeah, I mean, r- this problem, like I said, multi-layered like an onion. You've got orientation prejudice. You've got religious prejudice. You've got the gun issue. And I find it interesting that all these just came to a massive collision in this one incident. And nobody knows what to make hide or hair of this because nobody knows what the fucking truth is. You can't ask the shooter because he's dead. Right. And even if he was still alive, you think he's going to fucking give you the answer? Exactly. He's going to be like that bearded nutbag that went shooting in the fucking Planned Parenthood clinic (laughs) and said, I was defending the honor of all the dead babies. Right. Where was the anti-Jesus sentiment in that? Right? Because that got quieted down real quick. Yeah. You heard only about that for a little while. Well, no. They started honing in on the mental illness angle. Parting thoughts? I think I'm going to go buy another gun. Wise strategy. (laughs) Wise strategy. While holding my Bible. Well, as they say, the only way to stop guns is with more guns. And as I've pointed out in the past, using another argument that was brought up by, I believe, Stephen Colbert... You just change that to any other thing. The only way to stop AIDS is to give everybody AIDS. Mm -hmm. The only way to stop anal rape is to anally rape everybody. Doesn't make much sense. Doesn't make much sense. And I probably won't buy any more guns. I'm too poor. I like that that's the motivating factor. That is the motivating factor. Versus something more logical like, I don't have six arms like the Indian deity Shiva. I can't you don't know that. You don't have six arms. You don't know that. I'm looking right at you. You've never seen me naked. Do your tits have fingers? They might. They're big enough to have their own arms. Are you picturing it? I'm picturing it. She has some pretty big tits. It's true. It's a fact. Not that I've seen them. I've seen them in blouses. Blouses. No, I sound like an old You're lady. 90. I've seen tits in blouses. <laughs> Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it? That is at what do we call it? You can find the show's page on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash what do we call it podcast show. For the what do we call it podcast, I'm J Man. And I'm Nurse Ashley. And that's the end. 